This is my fully custom robot control system on a PCB, which I used in my sumo robot a couple weeks ago. I built it to replace more conventional circuitry which I found quite outdated, like using an Arduino with a motor drive shield, or having a literal rat's nest of wires with separate boards. Anyways, not only is my all-in-one board smaller than an Arduino Uno, it also has quite literally hundreds of times the processing power thanks to an ESP32-S3, and the modern power circuitry going with it is so efficient that you can drive motors at up to 32 amps each, forming this absolutely unbeatable robot which you can check out after the video. Let's get started. Here's a block diagram, the simplest form of representing any circuit in my opinion, and one of the best ways to get started with a PCB design. To maintain audience retention, I would now overlap my voice like a TikToker and use extremely long run-on sentences. Hope you enjoy. Ideally, the battery delivers power to the entire system, to the motor drivers directly, and to the microcontroller and other sensors through a buck converter if you're using a 5 volt microcontroller, or through an LDO with the buck converter's output at its input if you're using a 3.3 volt microcontroller for extra stability, just because 5 volt ones are normally older and couldn't care less. Anyways, focusing more on this part of this extremely sophisticated graphical representation, these two blocks here are optional, but if your system is high powered, as in, you know, 6 amps or more per motor, I'd use the power switch, and of course, if you have space, reverse polarity protection is pretty sigma too. And I went through both concepts in this video, which you can also check out after. The motor drivers, as you've probably heard of before, need to include four power transistors arranged in an H-bridge, also known as a full bridge, to drive a brushed DC motor bi-directionally, and for any sort of acceptable efficiency, you're gonna want MOSFETs, not BJTs, as the transistor of choice. You still with me? Good, let's pick our components now. With up to a total of 28 amps being drawn from the motors requiring an anti-spark power switch and 3.3 volt logic with an ESP32-S3 microcontroller, at least three voltage regulators need to be present on this board two for logic and one for the power switch. For the main 5 volt supply, I used an AP63205 with this massive inductor and some capacitors, which worked pretty well, outputting up to 2 amps and being quite cost effective. Reflecting back though, I'd rather use an LMQ66430 because it outputs 3 amps and makes for a smaller design, even if it might be more expensive, and I'll probably use it in future designs. Either way, I would recommend using the Texas Instruments Wii Bench Circuit Designer for all your switching regulator needs, because it asks you not only the requirements of your system, but also whether you want it to be balanced, low cost, high efficiency, or small footprint, so you can choose the right IC for your board. Keep in mind, the maximum VIN or voltage input of your converter should ideally be twice your battery's maximum voltage. However, a little less is okay, and I'll explain this later. After choosing out my favorite IC, I can simply click on Customize and look at the circuit in detail, and it even gives me specific part numbers and prices if I click on each component, which is really helpful. For the 3.3V LDO, I like using the LD3900PU33R for 2 amps, which is 3x3mm, TOV76733DRVR for 1 amp, which is 2x2mm, or NCP167BMX330TBG for 700mA, which is 1x1mm. But that last one does need some pretty tight clearances of 5mm or 0.127mm. If you're using the power switch, all the necessary information for that can be found in this video. What's up guys, I'm back again, and a real person more than ever. For the motor drivers, I've whipped up a table here with some of the most compact and low-cost full bridge integrated drivers from Texas Instruments, which you can essentially just plug straight into a couple I.O. ports of your microcontroller, along with some passive components to start driving a DC motor. As for all of these ratings, I would, again, go with twice your battery's maximum voltage or more for the voltage rating and your motor's stall current, or more, for the current rating. The reason for this is that when the current changes quickly in an inductive load such as a DC motor, 
transients characterized by large positive and negative voltage spikes can occur. So higher voltage ratings can protect your system and make it more robust. Anyways, the reason I recommend to you guys TI motor drivers is because many of them package the silicon die onto the lead frame in a way that is much more advantageous for cooling and space saving. This is called flip chip on lead frame packaging, or FCOL. That's how these TIDRV8245-Q1 chips in my all-in-one controller board can handle 32 amps in a 20mm squared package, while ST's VNH7040AYTR, which has essentially the same ratings, comes in a 105mm squared package, more than five and a half times bigger. The chips listed in this table that include FCOL packaging are the DRV8212, DRV8243, DRV8244, and DRV8245, so they'll have the highest power density and efficiency, but the other ones are great choices too. I'll pause here so you guys can choose which one you want. All right, this is the last major component that we're going to need to pick, and it's going to be largely based off of this formula from Texas Instruments, which basically says that, who cares? I made this graph in Desmos where you can just input your motor's inductance and stall current, and then some parameters about your battery to get the minimum bulk capacitance you should use. It's again linked in the description, and so is Texas Instruments' more detailed video about this topic. But yeah. To use the so-called calculator I've made, you're going to need the inductance of your motor like I said before. But since I don't have the means to measure this parameter and you might not either, let's just open up an AI chatbot. Then it'll spit something out and you can just take a value somewhere in the middle of the range it gives you and go back to Desmos. Either type it in or slide the slider to the right value and then fill in the other stuff in the same way. Now find where the red line intersects the green line within the graph area by using left click to pen and the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Click on where it looks like they intersect and you'll see a gray dot pop up, which you again need to click on. And the first value, the X value, is the capacitance in microfarads. And the second value, as in the Y value, is the voltage ripple as a result of choosing this size of a capacitor. So I would need to choose a capacitor which has more than 323.7 microfarads of capacitance which rounds up to 330 microfarads using these helpful lines which indicate standard capacitor values. Another thing we need to consider here is what type of capacitor you're using. It's always a bigger electrolytic capacitor in parallel with a relatively tiny ceramic capacitor. That's right. Ceramic capacitors have less losses and lower ESR than aluminum electrolytic capacitors, which allows them to deliver more current in a smaller package but they can't really be manufactured any larger than about 22 microfarads at 35 volts and 150 microfarads at 16 volts. So chances are, you won't be satisfied with having to expand your board space so drastically just to fit the right amount of capacitance in. What's normally done instead is just shoving as many ceramic capacitors near the motor drivers as you can, which will get you in the tens of microfarads range and then backing it up with hundreds or even thousands of microfarads in aluminum electrolytic or aluminum polymer capacitors like I've done here. I just showed you how to pick some of the most important components of an all-in-one robot control system. In the next video, we'll go through the schematic and PCB design of one of the boards I've created in KiCad 8. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and continuing to support this channel. I mean, we've hit over 4,000 subscribers and 200,000 views within less than a year. And I wake up to all these nice comments from people on my videos, so genuinely thanks. Do you want to have your own robot parts manufactured with affordable prices and absolutely great quality? Well, you can head over to PCBWay, your one-stop shop for PCBs, PCB assembly, and injection molded, 3D printed, CNC'd, or even laser cut materials. They're currently running a project design contest, which you can win up to $1,500 cash and a robot dog from. So make sure to check it out in the description. Also, I am going to be taking the SAT 
in October. So if you guys have any tips and tricks on how to score a 1600, because I want a 1600, um, just leave them in the comments down below, please. Thanks.